Pastor Gardeners, I'm here because I hope you can hear this singing chorus of cicadas. You know, brood 10 has already emerged. And in this particular yard, they have a different species of cicada than what I have in my yard. These are the 17 year uh, cicadas and it is 2021 and we're in the month of early June right now. And in this yard is Cassini, which is, well, their science name is Magia Cicada because they're magical. And in this yard is the little smaller one that's black. And his call is a little bit more of a, like a zeet, 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 or tick, 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 and then a buzz. And you can hear them in the background. Now, when they're gathering in their chorus tunes, it kind of all blends together. And as you can hear, it's surging on and off. In this particular property, I was just amazed. So I, we're going to take a look at them up close. You know, this is one of the largest population broods, this brood 10. And it's one of the, it's not the largest, but it's one of the largest that's concentrated in a particular region. And we're in the northeast of the United States. So come on over. Let's look at Cassini. They're humming in here. I'll show you how to tell a male from a female. But come on down here and look at some of these species. There's actually three different species. The one in my yard is Septendecium, Decium, which is the larger one. You can see how much bigger these are. And you can tell this one because of the orange, large orange bands on the abdomen of them and much larger. Whereas the ones in this yard, which we're gonna look at, is much smaller. And this one is black. This is Cassini, which here's a sample of them down on this end. Now, I hope you're picking them up and playing with them because see on the back of this one, you can actually see the ovipositor back here on the back. Let's roll the one over in my hand. Yeah, that's a female because I can see the little pointy rear end on her. So that's a female. Let's see what this... Well, we know this is a male. And if you look up underneath, they have tympanic mem uh, the timbrels underneath. Can you see those white little timbrels underneath the wings? I'm not sure that can focus on it, but they're under there. And that's how he makes his sounds to attract the female. And you can see on the rear end of the male, it's a little bit more blunt and you don't see that scissors ovipositor. Here's another male. And he's singing while he's in my fingers. Let's see what this one is. Oh, there's a female. She's a little bigger. Look at her rear end, how different she looks. Oh, this is a different species. This is back to the larger Septendecium. And there's another one, Septendecula, which is has a little bit narrower orange bands. So actually there's three species in brood 10. And here they all are. But yeah, this is the bigger one. You can hear it. This is a male because it's singing. And then you can see the musical organs underneath of there. They, I read on one of the websites that they have a particular protection on their own uh, hearing parts so that they don't have to, so they can drown out their own sounds. But isn't it pretty cool? And it's such a mystery. Like, how does this little guy know when to emerge from the soil? There's all kinds of research done. And there's concerns because there's so many threats to the cicada because of climate change and then because of so much suburban suburbanizing of our communities and houses being built that many of the numbers of different cicada broods are falling off because of that. But how do they know when to come out of the ground? Well, we know that they probably are reading maybe temperature and we're suspecting that they might be reading the flow of sap in the tree roots because they're spending 17 years under the ground sucking on the tree roots. At the early stages of their nymph development when the egg becomes a baby, it falls out of the tree and goes in the ground. They like to be around grasses and feeding on those kind of roots at first. So that's why I don't see them as often in the deep, deep woods. I often see them in the grassy areas and that's why they're in your communities as well, is the, their preference for the type of roots that they're gonna feed on. So a very mysterical, m mysterical life cycle. And why 13 or 17 year cycles? And what we guess is there are animals that have cycles like every other year, they have population swings where they go up in numbers and fall down the next year, or animals that are predators might be on a three year cycle. Because the cycle of the 13 and 17 year cicadas is a prime number, it's not one that's on a regular schedule. Therefore, the cicada can maybe skip over the generations, peak generations of some of those predators. 
but everybody likes to eat them. Your dog, my dog, everybody, all the animals. And the purpose of having so many is to satiate the animals and then have plenty left over to still mate. So that tunneling in the soil is also beneficial. So I don't want you killing them in your yard. No reason to spray these. They're harmless. They can walk on you. It doesn't hurt at all. They don't sting, they don't bite. They do suck the juices out of your plant. They do poop on top of your trees. We had a heavy rain two nights ago, but here you probably can see a little bit of honeydew. We thought originally that they don't feed, but you can see the drops of honeydew. In this particular yard, it actually drips on your head. She has so many of them. So there's some interesting facts for you, Master Gardener.